hi everyone my name is tandy welcome to my youtube channel to wrap up our series on electromagnetism i thought it was a good idea to do a question just to have a bit of practice on how to go about answering some of the problems you might be asked when sitting for an exam or a test the question we will be doing on this video is from the november 2018 examination so the grade 11 physical sciences paper one if you need a little bit of revision on concepts relating to electromagnetism i would suggest that you first watch the first two videos i did on the topic i will leave the links in the description i'm not going to be going into detail because most of everything was covered in those two videos so our question goes something like this a square induction coil with a side length of 3 cm and 400 windings is placed perpendicularly in a uniform magnetic field and then rotated at an angle of 45 degrees in 0 0.08 seconds. So a few things to take note of is 1. The fact that our induction coil is a square where each side has a length of about 3 cm. Two, it has 400 windings. Three, there is a uniform magnetic field. And four, the induction coil is first placed perpendicularly to the magnetic field and then rotated at an angle of 45 degrees. If you look at the image accompanying the question, we see that we have two bar magnets. A north pole represented by the letter N and a south pole represented by the letter S. We see that the magnetic field lines are from the north pole to the south pole. The magnetic field lines are represented by the dashed lines between the bar magnets with an arrow pointing at the south pole. The induction coil, which is represented by the black thick line between the two bar magnets, takes the shape of a square as they mentioned. The question goes on to say that the induced EMF in the induction coil has a value of 7 volts. The first question is asking us to state Faraday's law of electromagnetism in words. The second question wants us to calculate the change in magnetic flux. And the third question wants us to determine the magnitude of the magnetic field. The question continues on to say that the coil is now rotated at an angle of 45 degrees, but now in 0 0.05 seconds. The follow-up questions from the statement are, how will the induced EMF be affected? Will it increase, decrease, or stay the same? And the second question after that wants us to explain our answer. In part two of electromagnetism, again, the link to that video is in the description. We said that Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. So that kind of answers the first question. And that means essentially that an increase in the magnetic flux will result in an increase in the induced EMF and a decrease in the magnetic flux will result in a decrease in the induced EMF. Question 11.2 wanted us to determine the change in magnetic flux. We know that Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction can be stated mathematically as given by equation 1 on your screen, where the symbol for the induced EMF is given by the Greek letter epsilon, so that figure that looks like an E. And the change in magnetic flux is given by the Greek letter delta, that figure that looks like a triangle that is next to the Greek letter phi. So that figure that looks like a circle with a line uh, over it. And N is the number of windings, which we said was 400. And the delta T or, yeah, delta T is the change in time measured in, in seconds. So we are looking to calculate the change in magnetic flux. We know that the induced EMF equals to 7 volts and N equals to 400. And the time of rotation was 0 0.08 seconds. We can rearrange equation 1 and make 
uh, the change in magnetic flux subject of the formula. If you do not know how to go about rearranging that equation, you can always leave me a comment and I will explain it to you. So when we change, when we make the change in the magnetic flux, the subject of the formula and solve the equation by putting in all the known values, we find that the change in the magnetic flux is the negative of 0.014 Weber. So Weber, that WB, is the unit of measurement for the magnetic flux. Question 11.3 wants us to determine the magnitude of the magnetic field. To do that, we have to use the equation to calculate the magnetic flux that we discussed in detail in part 2. The link to that video is in the description. The magnetic flux equation is given by the magnetic field symbol B multiplied by the area with a symbol A multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta. So that's the cos theta. Remember, theta is the angle between the normal to the induction coil represented by the red dotted line and the magnetic field pointing from the north to the south pole. We know that the shape of the induction coil is a square with each side length having the value of 3 centimeters. To calculate the area of a square, you must just square the value of the side length. So that will be 3 centimeter squared. But you must first convert from centimeters to meters and to do that we divide three centimeters by 100 and square it and we will calculate the area to be 0 0.0009 meter squared the problem statement also referred to two situations one when the induction coil was placed perpendicularly to the magnetic field lines and two after rotating it through an angle of 45 degrees so before the rotation, the angle between the normal to the induction coil and the magnetic field lines is zero degrees. They are in the same direction, that is, they are parallel to each other. If theta is zero, we know that from mathematics, the cosine of the angle uh, zero is one. So cos, feet, cos zero equals to one. Therefore, the magnetic flux equation before rotation is just given by B multiplied by 0 0.009 meter squared, which is our area or the value of our area. Imagine then that we rotate the inductor coil that it makes an angle of about 45 degrees with the magnetic field. So look at the blue thick line that represents the coil after rotation. The magnetic flux for this situation that is, the magnetic flux after rotation is given by B multiplied by 0 0.0009 meter squared multiplied by the cosine of the angle 45. So that is multiplied by cos 45. If we minus the magnetic flux before from the magnetic flux after, we will get the change in magnetic flux. That is, the change in the magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic flux after rotation minus the magnetic flux before rotation. We already know that the value for the change in magnetic flux because we calculated it in equation 11.2 and we found it to be negative 0.0014. Weber. We continue with the rest of the question in the next slide. Like we showed in the last slide, the change in magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic flux after rotation minus the magnetic flux before rotation. That is, the change in magnetic flux is given by B multiplied by 0 0.009 meter squared multiplied by cos 45 minus B multiplied by 0 0.009 meter squared. So now it is just a, a little bit of maths where we rearrange the equation and make B subject of the formula. If you don't know how to do that, do let me know in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to tell you how. After we make B subject of the formula, we can substitute the value for the change in magnetic flux that we calculated in question 11.2. And we find that B equals to 5.31 Tesla. Tesla is the unit of measurement for, for, for magnetic field. So it is represented by the letter T. Question 11.4 asked us how the induced EMF would be affected if the inductor coil is rotated through an angle of 45 degrees, but 
now for 0 0.05 seconds. Remember, initially the problem statement mentioned that it was rotated for 0 0.08 seconds. But now we are decreasing the time of rotation from 0 0.08 seconds to 0 0.05 seconds. From Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction equation, we know that the induced EMF is inversely proportional to the change in time, meaning that a, a, a decrease in the change in time will result in an increase in the induced EMF. EMF, and an increase in the change in time will subsequently result in a decrease in the induced EMF. The answer is that because we have reduced the time of rotation in the inductor of the inductor coil, we will observe an increase in the induced EMF. The second part of the question says that the north pole of a bar magnet is pushed into a solenoid as shown in the image on your screen. If you watched part two of electromagnetism, you will know that we said in a setup such as this one, a North Pole will be induced at X. Again, please watch that video as it goes into more detail about how to determine which pole will be induced where, as well as determining the direction of, the, of both the magnetic field or the current. So when we move that bar magnet closer to the solenoid, a current will flow into the solenoid because of the increasing magnetic field. The current will induce a second magnetic field in the solenoid and we call that the induced magnetic field. The induced field will act against the increasing field from the bar magnet. So because there is an increasing magnetic field, the induced magnetic field will be in the direction to oppose this increase and that can only be happen if the North Pole is induced at X. We know that a North Pole and a North Pole will repel each other. So the induced magnetic field will be set up such that it repels the North Pole of the approaching bar magnet. Hence, the induced magnetic field is opposing this increasing magnetic field. If we then use the variation of the right hand rule where the thumb points in the direction where the field lines from the induced magnetic field emerge and your fingers curl in the direction following the current, then we see that the, my thumb is pointing from left to right. It's actually, no, it's actually pointing from right to left. This is because the North Pole was induced at X and we know that field lines from the North Pole, field lines essentially emerge from the North Pole. Then the current is upwards, represented by those red arrows on my fist. If we are looking at the solenoid from the front, and that can only happen if the current is flowing from A to B. I hope that makes sense. That brings us to the end of part three of electromagnetism. Remember, if something was not clear, please do not hesitate to leave a comment. Or if you like, you can message me privately on my social media accounts that I have left in the video description. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. Till next time, I'm out of here.